Because if we stand together and we ask for benevolent help, folks, it's going to be there. In fact, I've been told that the Andromeda Council has already decided to directly intervene, but I don't know what that is. I can tell you this, that the Pleiadians are at full-fledged war with the Greys outside our solar system. They're, they're dying on both sides. This is going on, and the Hubble telescope sees it, and there are two Hubble telescopes, not one. The Russians sent one up, but you're not being told about that. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> Olympus Mons, 15 miles high. 1979, NASA admitted that they saw water vapor and ice clouds going over it. That's 90,000 feet. <laughs> okay, that's higher than the clouds on our planet. <clears throat> Now we're told that the circumference of Mars is 4,200 feet. The Andromedans say, eh, wrong. They say it's 11,230 miles. It's three times the size we're being told it is. The Andromedans also say that if you look at the planets in your solar system and you look at the brightness of those planets, that is proof that we live in a binary star system. They say we have two suns. But because of the rotation and the position of our planet, we never see the system. But if you were on Venus, Mercury, or the others, you would see it. They rotate around each other. I, I realize it flies in the face of everything. I'm just here sharing with you, and I'm just asking you to keep an open mind. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay. Um, Cydonia is in the northern hemisphere. Now I'm told that at one time most of that area was covered with water. And that along the equator of Mars is where most of the colonial cities were, colonies, outposts. They said much of the bigger cities on Mars before it was destroyed was in the southern hemisphere. Now I want you to, can we, honey, can we focus on just a shape? I want you to focus on this area right in here. Now this, is, this area is known as Our Great Plantation. This is in the Southern Hemisphere. Now there's a little happy face. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was pretty amazing. <laughs> you know. Okay, but if we go to the next slide. This apparently is another tomb that was in fact destroyed. And these are three more pyramid, pyramids that are lined up just like Giza. This area right here. And that these are also ruins. This is what they say. And folks, they've never lied to me. Right here. They want us desperately to wake up. Now they have their own selfish reasons. Okay? Because of the fact of the problems that apparently come up in the future. But there's also another reason. Many of the human races in our galaxy, because of so much interbreeding between the one race, the genetics apparently are starting to break down. There's only one race in our galaxy that can give these particular human races a genetic boost, and that's us. But they can't use our genetics. They can't even approach us because of the vibration we all move at, which is fear and anger. They say when we're not taking advantage of others, we're taking advantage of ourselves. <laughs> we're, it's, it's, well, it hasn't stopped the regresses because they vibrate at this frequency and they've also helped to propagate the belief, many of the belief systems that we have right now. Um, we have real problems because this is all coming to a head by the year 2000. Um, they're going to be here in 97. And, uh, I mean, you know, official protocol ships from Orion are going to be here. Now, I want to share with you some of the things that the Greys are up to. Many people say they've left. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but apparently they're still here, and they have no intentions of leaving because they need us. They are desperately trying to save their race by using our genetics, but it isn't working. They can create the form, but they can't put soul in the body. That's a gift. Now, here's what they're doing. This is what I'm told they're doing. I'm told that many of the abductions that are occurring now, that the vital body 
the aura of the people being abducted, which is primarily the females in a family. And it's usually the first and second daughter and the mother. What they are doing is they are peeling off the vital body, the closest part to the energy field, and they are storing it and they are feeding it to the hybrids that have that mother's genetics in it. And apparently they're doing this to keep them alive. And they're also apparently trying to create soul. They think by stealing your aura, the vital body, in your energy field and giving it to another, that it will create soul. You need to be aware of this. Okay, this is why a lot of folks who are weird things are happening, they're getting real sick and run down, is because your vital life force is being stripped from you. And folks, there is a violation of free will big time going on here. You know, there are a lot of lines in metaphysics. And one of them says that you are you create your own reality. Well that's true. But there is a violation of free will. And we are being violated big time. And our race has been for the last fifty four hundred years. Big time. I'm dealing with the race we know ourselves now as Homo sapiens sapiens. I don't know, is there another slide? Ah, Phobos. Phobos is an artificial moon. This is where the majority of the 2,000 real graves that are left are hiding out, is on Phobos. And when you look at pictures of Phobos, when you go through your magazines or you go through, um, you know, the astronomy magazines, I'm told that you should, I've, I've been asked to share with you the idea that you should look very carefully about the inside of craters. That many of the openings that lead into this are inside, inside the craters. That the bottoms open up and the ships come in and the ships come out. Okay? Now, Phobos is a major anomaly because it goes counterclockwise to everything else in our solar system. It rotates counterclockwise to everything else. Uh, let's see, there's one more. Okay, this is the North Pole of Jupiter. This is a photograph taken by the Voyager. I'm oh, sorry, the Galileo. Anybody care to tell me what that might be? <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> yes, that's the North Pole. When it went over, it photographed this sitting there. <laughs> it could be. It could be. I'm, I'm just sharing it with you because I want you to think about it. <laughs> I think it's a satellite. It's an alien satellite that they caught on top. They, 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 that satellite analyzing the surface. That's a very good answer. I know it is. <laughs> Please. This is Ganymede. Ganymede's another artificial satellite. Um, Ganymede has life on it, has water, has an atmosphere, has oxygen. Um, many of the benevolent races use this as a base. This is Ganymede. I'm sorry? That's Jupiter. It's one of the moons of Jupiter. Now, if you look carefully at the satellite we just sent up there, and you look at the rotation of what it's focusing on, um, the, the moons that it's focusing on will tell you an awful lot about what it is that they're looking for. They do nothing um, without a reason. And uh, let's see, let's see. Okay. Okay, next next slide, please. I think that's the last one. That's the last one. Okay, we can have the lights be great. Thank you, Dean. Okay, I can I can come out from behind here. Okay, I want to share this with you. Um, 
This last thing, I was told that March 23, 1994, that 19 suns pole shifted in our galaxy, and that many are pole shifting all the time. At exactly the same moment that the suns in our galaxy pole shifted, a color and sound frequency started emanating from all the black holes in the known universe. <laughs> now, apparently what this sound and color frequency is doing, it is literally creating a holographic density above all, all, all others. And on a numerical level, it would be, at our level, it would be considered the 12th. The Andromedans say that there are 11 creational densities in our universe. This is now adding a 12th. And that what it's doing is that it is literally lifting all the dimensions up. 11 is going to 12, 10 to 11, etc. Now they say that all indications are that by December 3rd, in our linear time of the year 2013, third density as we know it will cease to exist. It is now presently imploding on itself as it is being raised to a higher vibration. And that those of us who go, stick around and go for the ride will be moving through fourth into fifth density. Just like that. And that we will start to see very clear indications of this um, around the year 2007. Now, apparently the Andromedan Council, which is a group of 139 planetary systems, and I can't tell you exactly how many races because I don't know, has made a decision and has told all of the extraterrestrial influences in our solar system, both benevolent and non-benevolent, and those who are in the middle, to be out of this solar system no later than August 12, 2003. I don't know how they're going to back it up, but apparently they've decided they're going to. So they want them all out of here. Now, <laughs> if, if this happens, and they do leave, you're going to see incredible things. If they do not, I have been told to tell you this, that there's a very high probability that we will wake up one morning or go outside one night and the moon will not be there. It will be towed towards Jupiter. And they will deal with the energies that are there out there. Because if they have to go to battle and the moon gets destroyed, it will destroy most of the Earth because you know pieces of it will come here. Plus, it has an energy source inside of itself. Okay, it's a spacecraft. Um, so this is another possibility. And, you know, um, I talked about the tides. I mentioned the tides. And Warren, I said, hey, that's no big deal. We can just get you another one. <laughs> Apparently, it's no big deal. You know, planetary science is no big deal when you're at that level of technology. Yes, ma'am. Um, I noticed that the moon had moved closer to Earth. What do they say about that? About two years ago? Um, apparently, it's, it's moving closer all the time. Um, the Andromedans say that it's moving nine inches closer to us. And we're not being told um, about anything about it. They're also, they also have said that Mars is also moving closer to us as well. That it's moving closer? I don't know what it is. Unless it's to disrupt the uh, uh, the gravity pull will create earthquakes. What's nine inches have to do with 240,000 miles? I don't know, sir. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Where people in the back cannot hear these questions. I'm sorry. I'll repeat the questions when they're said. Thank you, Dean. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The question is if if the are if the sat if the satellites or the moons are artificially artificially created, why do they make the surfaces so rough? Obviously to hide what they are. Um, other than that, I don't know. Yes. Man in the back. Yes. Um, yes. We really have a struggle going on between basically good and evil. Are the benevolent um, people more, you know, more um, powerful or is it more up-down? I mean, do we really have a chance? Okay. 
The question is if there's really a battle between good and evil. Are the benevolents more powerful? Do they have more? And do we really have a chance? Oh, gosh. Um, I believe, I've been told that if they stuck together, yes, they could resolve the situation here. But there are, there are some significant problems that they have. Now, back in 1985, when I was being told all of this, there were a lot of discussions going on back in Andromeda about what to do with us. Now, half of the Andromeda Council didn't want anything to do with us. And their reasons were this. These were their sole reasons for not wanting to help us. They don't respect them, their home. They don't respect each other. And they don't respect themselves. What is their value? Now, the side, those that wanted to help, because they have seen us as totally being violated with our free will, somehow convinced them that this was a worthwhile project. Now, intervention not only changes our reality, it changes their reality. And one of the things that the Andromedans and Moranay has said specifically is they don't want to come down here and help us when we don't want to help ourselves. Because then they end up babysitting. And if something happens, then they, we could always blame them. And the cycle starts all over again. This is about self-responsibility. That's what this whole thing is about. There are one group of ETs who say, well, there's no way. You cannot be self-responsible. You cannot rule yourselves. And then we were given this opportunity 200 and some odd years ago to try this experiment. And we succeeded in doing it. But now we're being lulled back into a place where we want somebody to take care of us. Yeah. And, and you know that, that, that you're going to sacrifice your freedom. I'm not about to do that. Neither. So who's going to win? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I had a place to hide until it was over, but I don't. I you're right. Uh, the question was, uh, she added that we've been manipulated and they've helped to change us into a different direction. You're absolutely right. However, when I brought that question up to Moran A, he looked at me and he said, Are you aware that your government is drugging its young people? And I said, well, yes. He says, are you aware of a couple other things that he mentioned which are really sensitive? And I said, well, yes. He says, well, what has your race done about it? I mean, 19, what, 1986, 1987, West 57th Street, twice in six months, showed Air Force personnel unloading bales of, of marijuana and cocaine off of planes at Hempstead Air Force Base and loading it up with weapons and it taking it off, taking off for Costa Rica. Twice they showed this on national TV. What happened? West 57th Street was taken off the air and nobody did anything. Again, it comes back to self-responsibility. They are watching us. They are watching us and saying, should we come in and help this race when they don't want to clean up their own act? When they don't want to take care of their own? Do you realize, and, and big time, and those who don't want to make a shift are going to be checking out because the frequency, everything is changing, folks. And I'm not trying to instill fear in you. I'm trying to share with you what they've told me, and they have not been wrong. Things are going to radically change, and it's going to start just like this. It has. It has. You watch November of this year, it's going to get really weird in this country. Really weird. They're going to try to divide us. and Because if you divide, you can conquer. And whatever you do, please don't turn on each other. The enemy is underground. They're on the moon. It is not your neighbor. It is not your policeman. He's not the enemy. You know, if you want to do something really constructive and you don't know what to do, just do this one thing. Come November, if there's an election, vote. Whoever's been in office, vote them out. Start over. That will buy us more time. What happened in 1994 to stop the integrating of the office? 
nothing. Apparently there's been this divine intervention and third density is moving into fifth. Therefore, they say this is going to happen by December of 2013, so the 41 years won't go by. So we've been rescued on some level already. But I don't know how many of us are going to make it. You know, now the <laughs> you know the world government has been told that we're overpopulated. Okay, by the aliens. The truth is they can't control all of us. They can't control us here. So they decide they want to just eliminate half the world's population. Now, folks, I want to share this with you. According to the Andromedans, our planet could comfortably handle a population of 11 billion if we didn't squander our natural resources and we went to free energy. Right. Yes. Now, the free energy has been suppressed forever. Right. If we went to that, we could turn this whole thing around. Right. All right? What's happened is the political systems have broken down, but they don't want to take responsibility for it because in order to fix it, they have to make us more free. And they're not about to do that. They are not about to relinquish control of you, your money, your assets, because you're a natural resource. So it's easier to create a catastrophe like a pulse shift or something else, biological weapons, and just wipe out half the population. And they're still in charge. And I can assure you that those people that you call your world leaders, those who are part of this game, will be sitting on the moon watching all this happen. And when it's done, they'll come back with answers, just like a politician, you know. <laughs> yes, sir, in the back with the striped shirt. Uh, you mentioned something about economics, materialism, what have you. How does any of that correlate with your comments about your getting our souls in a place that uh, we think of in terms of metaphysics or religion? How does that fit in? Where, okay. Where does the answers come from? <laughs> Who could not have a soul? The greys? The, 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 the clones? That, no, I'm talking about, I, I'm referring to the clones, the hybrids that they're creating. They do not have soul. That's what I'm told. That's right. They're not actual beings. Microprocessors, organic microprocessors are grown inside their brains. Some of them are not, no. The ones who are not clones? Yes, they do. What was that question back there? I still didn't get it. We got off. Yeah, where does the soul and spirit get into this? Okay. Is this a possible solution? Why are, we, why are they so interested in us? Now, this is really going to stretch your belief systems. <clears throat> I am told that a majority of the physical beings, human beings, that are in third density, not only on our planet, but in 21 other systems, who are experiencing the same problem we are having, are beings that apparently at some time in our past were at 11th density. Now, the Andromedans have said that our universe, what we know is our universe, is a twin, in linear time, and this is the only way that I can explain it is in, as we count time, is that our universe is a 21 trillion year holograph. It's a holograph. It's a picture within a picture within a picture, or a dream within a dream within a dream, however you want to look at it. And that apparently many of the souls of third density were at, were at 11th density. And for some reason, this collective group consciousness decided they wanted a different perspective. And they literally fell into the concept of time, into physicality, and literally carved out of nothing what we know as third density. Now, third density to many of these other races is like putting your hand in jello and trying to move it back and forth. There's so much resistance, it's so dense. And yet here we are literally creating all this. That's how powerful we are. That's how powerful our minds are. Which is why there's been so much focus on brainwashing. On trying to make us victims or believe that we're victims. Because the minute we wake up and we take a step back detached and see our situation for what it really is, They've lost control. It ends there the minute we awake. 
And this is why channeled information, so many different races and beings are trying to light the fire underneath us. Because they can't directly come in and interfere unless a percentage of us ask for permission. Because then it's a violation of free will. And they've done exactly what the regressives have done. Even though it was for our own good. You cannot violate free will. That's the law. So they are trying to help us awaken and at the same time try to make us think it's our idea. That's the trick. And, and it's working, I think, to a degree. But, you know, how quickly it's working, I just don't know. I'm scared. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I am scared about what the next four years are going to bring. A lot of it is... A lot of it is... I'm sorry, the question is, what about the earthquakes? A lot of, some of them are natural and some of them are being caused. Well, I wish I had a board. But what's basically happening is you've got a planet that is vibrating at a frequency of fear and anger. You've got this new frequency called the 12th density, which is lifting everything up. Well, these really dense energies cannot move up. So the planet herself, in order for her to move up, into fifth density has got to cut loose with this energy. And what's happening is that she's cutting loose with this negativity which she's been holding on to. It's hitting the surface and it's feeding us as a population because we're already in that space. You know, and, and you know, there are predictions of wars. Oh, God, we're all primed. We're all ready for it. You know, the whole world's broke. Everybody's looking for food. The world has got a food supply of 53 days. The entire world. The United States of America, should there be a catastrophe, has only a seven days food supply. What happens after those seven days? Are we going to start feeding off each other? That's our MO. Yes, sir. It's, okay, can you define densities, frequencies? Uh, density and dimension, they're really one and the same thing. They are a frequency in which light and sound osculate at. We osculate at a specific range. Other things osculate at other ranges, higher ranges. Uh, there really isn't anything lower than us at this present time. Uh, you know, there's only we've hit bottom, there's only one place to go, and that's up. <laughs> As the old saying is. So it's a frequency. It's light. It's sound. If this is a holograph, if what they're saying is right, that this is a 21 trillion year old holograph, then all of this is just light and sound. Now, there are places in space where there is nothing, no matter. According to the Andromedans, those are areas that have not been magnetized by thought. Now, with the first aspect of physicality, the first sign of creation, they say, is the electron. The moment that particle is magnetized by thought, it comes alive and it starts to create and manifest whatever is energizing it or magnetizing it. I know it's out there. I still have trouble with understanding a lot of it. Yes, ma'am. This is a time frequency that you see them for the 2013. Does that have anything to do with what some people are talking about, some of the astrologers and others about the entryways and the photon bands and the photon belt? Um, the, question, the question was, does the time, time of 2013 have anything to do with what astrologers or astronomers are saying about the photon belt? Ma'am, they have never mentioned anything about the photon belt. In fact, the Andromedans have absolutely no belief system whatsoever in astrology. And I, I don't mean to offend anybody. This is their perspective. They say it's all a belief system. How does it all agree? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> he, the gentleman said, "How does all of why why does this all agree?" He said, "Why does this all agree with the King James version?" How does this all agree with the King James Version? Well, I will just tell you, this is a very touchy subject. Um, I will just tell you this, that Morinay has told me that it is not, it is more important to know why you believe something than, why, than the fact that you believe it. 
And in their opinion, the fact that we all believe, or a majority of the people, believe in the book of Revelations, that we are literally going to self-fulfill it. <coughs> Let's see who else. I see somebody pointing to somebody else who doesn't want to raise his hand, probably. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Could you stand up? I can't hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. Richard Hoagland talks about hyperdimensional physics, mm -hmm. and through that, we can change our reality. So this is really what we're saying, is that if we believe in the book of Revelation, we pray. So wouldn't it be an idea that if we change our thought about the year 2015 as something uh, other than a uh, outline there, and that's sort of what he is saying, is hyperdimensional physics can allow that person to change their reality through their thoughts, and it's basic metaphysics. And that would be eliminating fear, because if we go into infinite fear, we cannot change our thoughts. I don't know, I just, when you said you were afraid, it made me uh, concerned about <coughs> your information, although I really think your information it sounds to me very valid, but when fear can change that reality, <laughs> yes, you know, it, it, you're, it does. The fears that I have are my own. Um, how do I put this? I have a lot of years invested as a, as a child and as a young adult in Christianity. I have been made aware of the fact that there's no net underneath me. No net at all. And the fear that I have is my own belief in myself to be totally self-responsible. I can admit that. So that's, that's the fear. Because if there's no net underneath me, it lies squarely on my shoulders to figure out my reality. And when I see all this stuff going on, what is it that I want to create? You know, what do I want to create? You know, my wife and I want to have a, have a baby. I'm 39 years old. I've been in many other relationships and I've raised other children that weren't my own. Now I want to raise my own. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on that influence that decision. So, I'm, I, you know, I share the information, but I'm also sharing myself. So, you, you know, you have, you have to take that whatever way you want. Yeah. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There... The question was about reincarnation. If the earth is destroyed in the future, where will all these souls go to continue to reincarnate? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I will share with you a couple things about that. Their theory, the Andromedan theory on this, on that is this. They say that all physical matter that came, that is in this 21 trillion year old holograph came out of what we know as black holes. So the Big Bang Theory is correct in its simplicity. But apparently what happened was some other universes somewhere also went through the process of evolving and those things that chose not to evolve, to raise their frequency for whatever reason, were taken into black holes and because spirit cannot be destroyed, it has to create another space to continue to evolve. Now the Andromedans call that space consciousness. They call our universe consciousness because that's what created it. They say this is happening all over again. And the London Sunday Times this past Sunday, for those of you on January uh, 1st, the London Sunday Times on the back, apparently the Hubble telescope has found a floating black hole that is moving through, it's right now in Virgo, 
It is floating and it is pulling some suns, some stars into it, but not others. And they're just, they're gone. And they're actually watching this thing now. And that's the London Sunday Times, January 1st. For those of you who want to go to your newsstands and try to get it. It's on the back page of the front section. Big article. Okay, so, you know, there's a God. And whatever she has decided to do, is going to happen. <laughs> Actually, I asked about that, and they said that, you know, that they call it the isness. They themselves don't know exactly what it is, but just that it holds everything together. But that if they had to give it a gender, it would be female. Because it creates. It creates life. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, one of the cross circles, uh, or a couple of them actually, this last summer uh, showed the, um, the planets around the sun, almost like your one uh, picture was there with the asteroid belt, but it was, was interesting no. that, the, that the, where the Earth is supposed to be, there was no planet. There was the ring there that showed the orbit, but there's no planet. How did you, how did you, how did that, did you see that in cross circles? That I did not, but somebody told me about it in Dallas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've not had an opportunity to ask about that. But ask him, would you? I'd like to know the I, 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 Believe me, I have a list of questions. Um, I'll get to you in one sec. Um, they, um, they say that the crop circles are fifth dimensional geometry. That's what it is. And um, in case you don't know that, crop circles have been showing up in the United States, but it's being suppressed. And they're primarily showing up along fault lines um, on, on the West Coast. Um, so stay tuned for that. They're actually happening, but the feds are doing an excellent job because of the satellites, making sure that the minute they're created, that you know they're out there as soon as possible to make sure it's bulldozed, plowed over, etc. Um, yes, Jen, sir, in the back. Yeah, I was just uh, curious um, how did your communication process with the Andromedans, and is it um, at your request or their request? and how often does it occur and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's absolutely no pattern to it. And, oh, gosh, can you hear it? Okay, he wanted to know how the communication with the Andromedans goes. Is it at my request or their request? Um, sir, there is no pattern to it. They let me know. I will go outside at night, which I do every night, and I will look up at the sky and I will project a symbol, which is a communication that I have with them. And I don't always get a response. Sometimes I have to wait months to get a response. But it's, um, they're almost always at night. Um, they're both telepathic as well as verbal. Now, Morinae is the only one that has actually gone to the effort to learn to speak. Asaeus doesn't. It's all telepathic, and they talk in symbols. Now, when you start, for those of you who channel, you're already, you may already be aware of this. Um, or mediums, I don't really like the word channel. Um, you get impression, telepathy is, is speaking in holographs. If you take that whole stack of papers and you put it all together, okay, when, you're, when somebody's talking to you telepathically, they're giving you that entire concept of everything like this. The whole thing is right there. It is not where I am describing, well, sir, we take this, we move it to the front of the house, then we take this beam and move it there. It's not like that. You get the whole thing instantly. And then you have to learn how to unravel it. It's taken me years to do this. And they've been really patient. And I'm not the only one. They're talking to three other people. I'm the fourth. There's one in Argentina who I don't know yet, but I've met somebody who does know him. Uh, there's one in Asia and one in Europe. And there are other groups that are also also contacting a lot of people here. Um, because we're different. We are really different. I'm not saying we're better, but we're different. And um, they apparently see some value in us, those that really want to help. Even the regressives see value in us, which is why they're so hell-bent on trying to control us and to suppress us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of energies coming. There are a lot of earth changes that are coming. I can tell you this beyond a shadow of a doubt, absolute proof positive inside of myself because I've been shown it. In eight years, Southern California will be eight islands. That's it. It's all going to be water, except for those mountaintops. So if you have family there, you got to let them know. 
New York City, New York City by the year 2000 will not be there. It will be ash. It will be sacrificed. It's going to be sacrificed. It's, the powers that be have already made that decision. Sacrificed. It'll be a sacrifice. An offering. An offering. Both souls that live there, their energy is going to be an offering. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, they can. Yes, sir. Natural phenomenon. That's correct. He said, he asked the question, basically he made a statement, the East Coast is going to be a man-made phenomena and the West Coast is going to be a natural phenomena and I agreed with him. How does that agree with Kingsley's revelation? I don't know, sir. I don't know. He said it would be destroyed. I don't know that he said it would be bombed. It was going to, yeah, an act of terrorism would, would turn it to ash. By the year 2000. Sir, I don't know. I could start any time. Truly, it could start any time. I'm amazed more hasn't happened. There are some really, really evil thinking souls here on this planet. I mean, it's unconscionable. It's just, it's unconscionable. If, if those of you know anything about the UN Biodiversity Treaty, if you look at some of the wording that's in it, it doesn't sound like a human being wrote that at all. No. You know, it, it, it's it's just too weird. There's just so much weird stuff. You know, and, and that's because they were influenced. I think the UN was set up by the that I don't know. I think that maybe in its original conception it was um, honest, but it's certainly been perverted. Certainly been perverted. I want to get somebody who has an asked question. Yes, ma'am. Um, is there, can you comment on Okay, uh, the question was, can I comment on angels and can I comment on walk-ins? As far as angels, um, <laughs> the Andromedans consider anybody who has spirit to be an angel. You know, you make your choices. You either you walk on one side or you walk on the other or you find the middle path. <coughs> Most of us are on one side or the other and we're desperately looking for the middle path. Um, it's just spirit. They're, they're just folks on the other side, beings on the other side who are trying to help and influence us to make decisions for ourselves. Um, if any of these angels supposedly tell you that they have all the information and that they need to follow, you need to follow them, like um, I.E. Ramtha, you need, you need to be very, you got to use more common sense and really trust your gut instincts. Because this is all about our evolution. You know, if, if it's true that we've been on 11th density, then we have knowledge, we have experiences that none of these other races have. And we already know how to do this. And we already know. And we just, we just have to somehow find out those keys. Every single one of you in this room has a piece of this puzzle. Every single one of you, you know, and, and you gotta you gotta honor that peace that you have, and you've gotta honor yourselves. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not awesome because you are. You are so awesome. It's it's just beyond words. You know, they want to consider you a natural resource. You will only be that if you believe it. It's that simple. This, you know, this does not have to be a major struggle. You know, unless we just stick our heads in the sand and, and go into denial. <clears throat> I mean, how could you be in denial with all this stuff that's going on? I mean, I, it, it blows my mind. <laughs> the regressives consider us a natural resource. 
They feed off of us. We make things for them. We produce for them. We create energy for them. They harvest our thoughts. You know, we can create things out of thin air, literally out of thin air, that they need technology to do. Everything, everything in your life was was made, was created, manufactured. Okay, even the idea was created. Okay, everything we've ever needed, this planet provided for us. How do you think it got that way? How do you think this planet knew exactly what to to manifest and we would end up here and and be able to use exactly what we needed? I don't know if I'm wording that right. Okay. Now, these things are supposed to happen in the next nine years, by 2004. Number one, scientific proof of dimensions and higher self-consciousness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your consciousness, your thoughts, who you are, is not in your brain. The only reason that our bodies have the brain is so that our higher, our soul, our greater selves, whatever it is, can make the body move. Okay, your essence is in your energy field. It's in your aura. That's who you are. That's your life force. That's where your consciousness is. It's not inside this bone right here. It's here. It's all around you. Two, reincarnation will be scientifically proven and demonstrated. Three, acknowledgement of other life in the galaxy and universe. Ample proof already exists on moon, Mars, and on the Earth. Four, extraterrestrial contact from at least nine different races. That's going to blow some minds. Introduction of free, clean energy devices based on magnetic fields of energy. Of course, they will be introduced. You notice the word there. They've already been built. But the earth is hollow and capable of sustaining life. And the existence of a city known as Cal Nigor, which is in the hollow earth, that was originally built by Lyrans. The Lyrans were uh, one of the original races of human beings. Number seven, rediscovery of the lost lands of Atlantis in the Atlantic and in the Pacific, a very large temple complex still intact that belong to Lemuria, approximately 150 miles southwest of Easter Island. Well, that's going to blow some minds. Number eight, reality that all we see in the physical is a holographic imprint directed and created from a higher portion of ourselves. Apparently, in the next 18, 19 years, we as a race are going to evolve over 150 years. It's going to be like that. Which is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. I mean, for every, I I don't know if you're aware of this, but for every two years that passes, military technology advances 44 years. Do you have any idea the, the toys they have that you paid for? I mean, it's awesome stuff. Of course, they don't want to let us play in the sandbox. I mean, that's ridiculous. Would you go back to the one that you said before you said we were about over 150 years in the next 10 years? In the next 18 years, we are supposed to evolve over 150 years. And then there was a statement before that, all that we see in the... In the physical is a holographic imprint directed and created from a higher portion of ourselves. Number nine. Human consciousness is not in the brain, but located in its entirety in the energy field and aura. This is the one and a half to five ounces that the body loses at the moment of death. That's who you are. That's the only part of you that's really you. You just you just create this to, to play the game here. <clears throat> okay. Number ten how our past and present educational processes have not prepared us to be completely conscious, creative thinkers. Number 11, that organic and plant life forms do exist on seven planets and 15 moons in our solar system. 
Yes, ma'am. Number 11, that organic and plant life forms do exist on seven planets and 15 moons in our solar system. Now, just because we don't have the technology to pick it up doesn't mean it isn't there. Okay? Number 12. Rediscovery that each of us is a part of the whole of the universe and the, we are a significant part of that idea that we call God. And that God is the idea called love. <laughs> Number 13, that this accelerating self-discovery being experienced was created and activated by all of us. So, well, sir, that's the $64,000 question. You get the answer, will you call me and let me know? <laughs> I guess it's just, I guess, you know, I guess it, you know, I... I, when I look at history, and I look at where we are today, there's a history of repeating, of history repeating itself. And, you know, it's like a hamster that climbs on the wheel. No matter how fast he goes, as long as he stays on that wheel, he's not going anywhere. So maybe we just needed to make a change. You know, maybe we're all sick and tired of this. You know, maybe we need like a vacation. <laughs> My understanding, sir, is that they are different. Uh, your consciousness is completely different. And this is important. There is a physicality on all dimensions. Okay? Because you can... you there just There's a physicality. It's different from us. For example, fifth density, we live in a color spectrum of 72. 72 colors are light frequencies. Fifth density is 214. That's, that's a major shift. That's a major shift. Number 14. That we as a product of extraterrestrial genetic manipulations are possessors of a vast gene pool that has many different racial memory banks of at least 22 extraterrestrial races in our DNA. Many different racial memory banks. That means that when things get a little bit higher, our kids, you, you're going to start knowing things that you don't have any idea how you know. But you do know it. You will know languages that haven't been spoken on this planet for thousands and thousands of years. You will just know because it's inside of us. We're a library. You know, uh, Barbara Marciniak, her piece, they talk about this as well. And I think some of the other uh, groups do. Because of our genetic heritage, we are considered royalty. We need to acknowledge it, acknowledge ourselves, and seize our genetic heritage. Now, I'm going to end on this. I was having a... Actually, I'm going to end on two things. I was having a particularly bad month. Personal relationships and just everything else. Um, and it was time for me to come back here. I was living in Lake Arrowhead at the time, which is in Southern California. And I didn't want to come back. I flat just did not want to come back. So I got really upset. I started to cry, and I just I didn't want to come back. And um, as I saw myself, as I found myself on the ground again, I remember I heard Viseus' voice in the back of my head. He said, turn around. I turned around, and he was, he was at the door of the craft as it was starting to take off. And he looked at me, and he said, Alex, the love that you withhold is the pain that you carry lifetime after lifetime. And I just want to pass that on to you. Because nothing else that they have said has changed me more significantly than that. Yes, the love that you withhold is the pain that you carry lifetime after lifetime. You disturbed me a while ago. You didn't have it, and yet you just defined your intent. What gave you the idea that you did not have it? 
it's a belief in oneself, sir. <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's a belief in oneself. Well, yeah. But we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that. I'm trying to get my all of myself away here. Hold on. I, I want to. I want to end up with this. I. I I'm done with this. I once asked um, I once asked the Sayas wrong microphone. I once asked the Sayas I once asked the Sayas okay what what was our future going to be? you know the future of us here on earth and this was his response. This is the Andromedan definition of our future, us as a race. Responsible freedom of self-determination. Becoming truly self-confident and free to unconditionally be responsible for oneself without being coerced to accept some higher authority. I want to read it one more time. Responsible freedom of self-determination. Okay. Folks, thank you for coming. Becoming truly self-confident and free to unconditionally be responsible for oneself without being coerced to accept some higher authority. Ladies and gentlemen, you're awesome. Don't let anybody tell you different. Go out there and kick ass. Thank you.